Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Division Chief Rudy Kaloff with the Bear County 2 Fire Department. Our team here at Bear County 2 Fire has put together a short fire and live safety video. Please pay attention and listen closely. The safety tips we're going to give you can be used every day. We want to discuss fire safety and tips for injury prevention. These topics include fire safety, cooking safety, bike safety, vehicle safety, and tips to remember when dealing with hot liquids. We're also going to visit the fire station, talk about our safety gear, and check out the fire trucks. Captain Brad Benderley will be joining us today to walk you through today's safety topics. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Benderley with the Bear County 2 Fire Department. I'm excited to talk to you all today about the importance of fire safety and injury prevention. We're sorry we can't be there in person and we'd love to answer any questions you might have. If you have any questions that your teacher or parents can't answer, ask them to give us a call or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Before we get started, I want to send a special thank you to your teachers and principal. We appreciate you allowing us in your classroom today. All right, now let's get started. Many of you have seen fire before, either through a barbecue at your house or on television. Fire can be big, small, red, blue, or a combination of them all. Some people use fire for cooking, staying warm, and even to create things. Fire is a tool, however, and not a toy. When used properly, fire creates life. When used improperly, fire can take life. This is why we don't ever play with fire or anything that can create fire, like matches and lighters. It's important to know and understand just how dangerous fire can be in the wrong hands. Now that we've learned the dangers of playing with fire, we're going to talk about what fire creates. Fire creates smoke. Smoke is nasty and makes breathing difficult or sometimes impossible. You need to remember that smoke goes up because to survive a smoky environment, you have to crawl low under smoke. Sparky is going to demonstrate how to crawl low under smoke for us. If our clothes happen to catch on fire, we need to remember to stay as calm as possible. We immediately stop, cover our face, drop to the ground, and roll back and forth until the fire is out. And we can't talk about fire safety without mentioning smoke alarms. It is important to have working smoke alarms in your house. Sparky is going to show us what a smoke alarm can look like and sound like. I know some of you don't like homework, but we're going to give you homework tonight. When you get home, ask mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, whoever you live with, to make sure your smoke alarms work. If you don't have any, tell them they can call the fire department for help. This year's fire prevention theme is, serve up fire safety in the kitchen. Did you know that cooking is the leading cause of home fires and home fire injuries? For some of you, I know you enjoy helping mom or dad cook, and that's great. However, let's be safe and practice these habits. Make sure to never leave the kitchen when you're cooking. Unattended cooking is a leading cause of fires in the kitchen. Also, let's make sure to have a lid nearby just in case a small grease fire starts. Tell an adult to slide the lid over the pan and turn off the burner. Make sure they leave the pan covered until the pan has cooled completely. When we're cooking, we don't want to wear baggy clothing. Loose clothing can hang down onto the stove and catch fire. Wear short, close-fitting, or tightly rolled sleeves when cooking. The clothes we wear while cooking is important, and so is creating space in the kitchen. Space around the stove in areas where hot food or drinks are prepared can be very dangerous. Let's make sure we tell everyone who's cooking to leave at least three feet of space to keep everyone safe. This space also keeps your younger brother and sisters from accidentally pulling pots and pans off the stove or counter, thus preventing burns. Sparky will demonstrate how to move objects away from the edge of the counter and show you how to turn pot handles inward while on the stove. A 
bet many of you watching have seen your teacher and your parents carry around a cup wherever they go. Well, chances are that these cups could have very hot coffee in them. Many of these cups do not feel hot, but are full to the brim with scorching liquid. Sometimes we don't know what's hot and what's not. To be safe, don't touch any cup or bowl that doesn't belong to you. I don't know about you, but I love a good bowl of soup. Well, anytime I warm anything up in the microwave, I make sure to use a hot pad and use two hands while removing whatever was heated. My eight-year-old wants to be a big helper at home, and sometimes she asks to cook popcorn. Well, just the other night, she did not listen when I asked her to wait. She opened the microwave door, grabbed the popcorn, and then opened it. Bam! The steam hit her in the face and caused her to drop the entire bag. This is exactly why we do not remove objects from the microwave without first asking an adult. Treat everything around the microwave or oven as if it will burn you, because it will. Safely use oven mitts, two hands, and again, ask for help. Most adults and children drive to work and school every day. The single most important thing we can do to stay safe in the car is to wear our seatbelt. Some children use a five-point harness, a high-back booster seat, or a seatbelt, depending on your height and weight. Remind mom or dad how important it is for everyone to be secured while driving in your vehicle. Now I know some of you are thinking, wait a minute, I don't wear a seatbelt on the school bus. Well, you're right, most school buses do not have seatbelts. However, anytime you're in a vehicle other than a school bus, make sure to ask an adult for assistance as needed. It can save your life or your family's. Remember, everyone, every seat, every time. I'm sure many of you love riding bikes. I know I do. Bike riding is fun and is also great exercise. However, anytime we ride bikes, we need to make sure we're doing it safely. It's important that we all wear a helmet every time we ride. We need to make sure the helmet fits us properly and is fastened correctly. We also need to make sure we're riding our bikes somewhere that's safe. For many of you, this might be on the sidewalk. For others, this might mean riding our bike on the street. Whenever you ride your bike on the street, make sure an adult is nearby. Better yet, ask an adult to ride with you. They will teach you the rules of the road. One of the rules is to make sure you're riding your bike with the flow of traffic, not against it. Many people have reflectors on their bike to make sure they can be seen while riding at dusk or dawn. Try to avoid riding your bike in dark clothing. We want you to be seen and to be safe. Every time we come to visit the schools or daycares, we always show everyone what our gear looks like. It's important for you all to see what we look like when we're dressed in our gear. We have to protect ourselves from the smoke and fire the same way you have to protect yourself from the cold. Many of you have a bike helmet, a jacket, pants, and boots. Well, we do too. Let's check it out. everybody, I'm Engineer Poston here with Bear County 2 Fire Department and we have Firefighter Mendez with us and today we're going to go over our bunker gear and show you guys what we wear and what it looks like so you guys can have an idea of what to expect when the fire department responds to your house. So first we're going to go over the gear. Um, here we have set out the boots and pants and Firefighter Mendez has her hood in here also and then we keep our jacket with us, helmet, mask and then our breathing air pack over there on the side. So Firefighter Mendez is gonna demonstrate for us slowly putting all these clothes on so you can see what that looks like, okay? So she's gonna start by putting on her hood. And then she's gonna pop her boots off and she's gonna jump into her bunker boots. And after she hops those pants up, she's gonna grab her jacket and throw her jacket on. And we also keep our gloves on our, on our jacket also. And she also carries a light with her so that we can find you and we can see you. So now she's gonna put on the mask so you're not gonna be able to see her face as much anymore. So she's still Firefighter Mendez in there, and you can see kind of her eyeballs, but she's covered up just a little bit more. 
And we have to tighten those straps so that we have a, an airtight seal so that no air leaks out. We cover all that up with our hood. And then we top it all off with our helmet. So then she's gonna put the breathing air pack on. It's kind of like a backpack, but it carries, uh, it carries breathing air so that we can breathe when we go into these fires. So she's gonna put that on her back just like a backpack. She's gonna tighten all the straps so that it stays close to her and doesn't go anywhere in a fire. So now she's gonna put her gloves on. So you'll see that she's gonna be completely covered up. She's gonna have big monster hands. So this is what the full firefighter ensemble looks like, the full firefighter outfit. So when you have the fire department responding to your house, this is what you can expect to be coming to you. And this is who you wanna to go to for help. If you see this, you wanna to go to them for help, right? So if we plug in our regulator, you're also gonna hear that she's not gonna sound like Firefighter Mendez anymore. She's kinda of gonna sound like Darth Vader a little bit. So if you listen closely, Sounds a little funny and you can still see Firefighter Mendez in there. You can see her eyeballs. And she's still the same person, but she's just covered up by that gear that's gonna protect us in a fire. Hope you guys enjoyed the demonstration of us showing you what we wear in a fire. And now it's time to show you the truck. A few moments later. All right, everybody. So this is our fire truck. Uh, we call this an engine. We have a lot of different types of trucks. We have small ones, big ones, but this is just one of the ones that we have and it's called an engine. And this here is the driver's side. This is where I sit. Um, so we've got the driver's seat, bunch of buttons that do different things. That's how we turn all of our lights on and make all the noises that we can make. And then moving on back here, you've got the back seat. This is where Firefighter Mendez is. And this is where we put all of our gear and we've got our breathing backpacks in the seats over here so we can get them on really fast. And then moving right here, this is some of the hose that we have. These are the ones that are gonna be fighting the fire. These are the ones that we're pulling and putting the, the fire out with. And then all of these different um, levers here are what control opening and closing the water. So um, when you see a fire hydrant, we connect this big, large diameter hose to the fire hydrant and then we feed our truck. So the water goes from the fire hydrant to our truck and then out through the hose. And moving on back here, just to make sure that we can adapt to any situation that we have, we have different adapters in all of these different compartments. And these different adapters ensure that no matter what size uh, water that we're dealing with, that we can access it. So Firefighter Mendez is gonna show you some of the other tools that we have closer to the back of the truck. So right here we have an ax, and then we have what we call a set of irons. And this stuff is going to be used for when we need to break into a house and put out the fire. And this helps us get those doors open and such. And right here we have uh, we have a big fan, we have a bunch of saws. This is also for cutting holes in roofs if we need to get the smoke out and the fan's gonna be to push all that smoke, all the bad stuff out. Right here is where we keep all of our ladders. So we have a 24 foot ladder and then up here we have all of our pike poles. And again, these are just tools to help push through things. All right, and coming this way, these are called extrication tools. And all of these things help us cut up cars if someone's in an accident, and this allows us to get easier access to them a lot faster and help uh, get us to help them faster.
Right here, we just have a bunch of toolkits that we might need. So we have a roof kit if you need to patch up a roof. We have drill kits, a tape kit, all kinds of kits. Right here is just extra hose that we may need in case we need to get a further length of hose to an area. And right here is also going to be a stabilization tools. So you want something to be really sturdy, you're gonna be able to put some of this stuff under vehicles and that's gonna help it to not move when we're working on them. And right here we have our ice chest and this is also gonna help whenever we need to stay hydrated. If we're on a call for a really long time, this is full of ice water and it helps us stay hydrated throughout the hot day. And then right here is just going to be the opposite side that uh, Engineer Poston was showing you earlier. Uh, the hose actually runs through the entirety of the truck. So what you saw on the other side is the same thing on this side. And then again, we have our cab. This is my gear right here. And all the air packs and everything else, this is where we keep anything that we might need to be able to go into the fire. And last but not least, we do have our lieutenant seat. He is the officer on scene. He's gonna be in charge of a lot of things. So here's his gear, uh, his coat is up there, and then he also has a small computer up here, and that lets him see all the emergencies that are going on all at once. All right, guys, so you've seen what our equipment looks like, and you've seen what we wear in fires, and now it's time to show you what it looks and sounds like. Everybody. I'm Engineer Poston and I'm Firefighter Mendez. Have a great fire prevention week and we'll see you next time. Thanks for visiting. Well, that wraps up our time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned how to stay safe. As Captain Bendeley said earlier, if you have any unanswered questions, please reach out to us. Have a great school year, everyone. We hope to see you all very soon. Goodbye.